Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Students who are looking to start careers in vehicle production at the AIDC's Gauteng Automotive Learning Center will be able to benefit from its new augmented reality welding program. Simon Senekas tells us more. Eight brand new Soldomatic welding simulators, which provide up to 93 different simulated welding lessons, have been introduced at the Gauteng Automotive Learning Center in Rossland, Pretoria. The simulators, which enable the center to cut several costs involved in practical welding training, work with two front-facing cameras and a replicated welding rod. Gauteng Automotive Learning Center Operations Manager Natalie Nelson notes that the program has been globally utilized to meet industry-specific skills requirements. What we've introduced is a simulated welding program. So we've looked at saying, instead of sending a learner straight in from the classroom back into the practical area, we've purchased welding simulators. And these are used, globally utilized, for students to actually go in and then apply the technical skills that they've learned in the classroom as well as then in the practical area to ensure that they actually are meeting the requirements for welding specifically. The Zoldomatic system allows a cut on consumable costs as there is no need to supply welding rods, steel plates, oxygen or any protective clothing as all these variables are now controlled by the user interface. The system also simplifies the teaching process by displaying the progress of the trainee on the screen, allowing the teacher and other trainees to observe the technique and proper procedure. Technical training facilitator at the Learning Center, Herman Patrick, showed Engineering News how the simulator's welding helmet can provide an accurate welding atmosphere, which includes smoke, sparks and heat. Patrick says that up to 18 students can observe as the trainer demonstrates theoretical aspects on a teaching screen using an overhead projector. He notes that for rectification purposes, the trainer can interchange views between simulators to highlight similarities or discrepancies in the individual's welding exercises. Nelson adds that the first of its kind program has been phenomenally received by the industry and that the center is currently looking into expanding augmented reality simulators by acquiring a spray painting simulator. We focus on the trial and error model, saying that students can come in and learn how to actually weld using the welding simulators before we send them into the practical area. From our side also, we save costs, so consumable costs are considerably lower as well. And how has the program been received by the industry? phenomenally well. We do regular tours of the site and of the facility for tier suppliers, for OEMs, and then the, the industry at large. They come in and have a look at what we're doing and they are bowled over by what we will be offering in the facility. Not only do we offer the welding, but we offer specializations in other areas like autotronics, mechatronics. So it is the first of its kind and it's been received very well. Other news making headlines this week. South Africa's inaugural policy uncertainty index shows a worrying spike and CISA adopts back to basic strategy for 2016. South Africa's first ever policy uncertainty index has been launched with the inaugural publication showing a spike in uncertainty during the fourth quarter of 2015. The news based uncertainty, the economists views on uncertainty, manufacturers views on policy constraints. This has given us an average PUI of 55.4, that in other words it's risen by 5.4 points for the fourth quarter, which does reflect a spike in the policy uncertainty over the previous base quarter. In the fourth quarter you had two important events which affect economic perceptions. The one is the so-called mini budget. There I think the view is there is predictability or there was predictability in the mini budget of the 21st of October of last year by the previous Minister of Finance as to what our budget might look like in March, uh, in February, later this month. But of course, with the events in, in December, this situation obviously turned around and explains why there was more uncertainty uh, surrounding uh, the, the replacement uh, of, uh, of Minister Neni. Uh, and the uncertainties generated by the saga around that appointment. A back-to-basics approach is needed to ride out the current economic environment and bring the consulting engineering sector back in from the cold, CISA President Lynn Pretorius said at her first presidential address. CISA as an organisation has to support the industry in addressing all these challenges. And going forward, we need to start getting our house in order. CISA is the voice of consulting engineers and we continually need to also pursue the role as a trusted advisor to government and to our clients. 
and going forward amidst these tough economic times. We need to go back to basics. Do what we know, we know it well, and do it well. And do those small things, do it well every day to ultimately ensure that we provide quality engineering excellence to our clients. That's Kramer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.